The first Fright Night was an excellent horror comedy that did quite well for Columbia Pictures in 1985. Three years later, the inevitable sequel came out and pretty much flopped. Box office results aren't always right though, so let's get into Fright Night Part 2. The story takes place three years after the original, and we see that the now 20 year old Charlie Brewster has gotten through the gruesome events by now believing that the villain from the first film, Jerry Dandridge, was simply a serial killer posing as a vampire and not really a bloodthirsty bloodsucker. Charlie attends at putting his life together, going back to study and working with his relationship with his new girlfriend Alex. When a beautiful woman named Regina starts to take an interest in Charlie though, he starts to believe that vampires might actually be real again, and once again seeks out the help of his old friend and horror host Peter Vincent to tackle the undead creatures, if they actually exist. Even though you wouldn't believe it by the way it has been treated by its studio, Fright Night 2 is actually a very good and fun sequel. It follows the usual sequel tradition of trying to outdo what was done in the first film, and it does exchange some of the more clever humor in the first with a bit more cheesy fun type of comedy, but since it all is crafted very well, it still works for me. A lot of it has to do with the fact that even though this is a sequel, with two of the main characters from the first one returning, it still feels like a story that could stand on its own. Speaking of the two characters that did come back, William Ragsdale is back as Charlie Brewster, and he's just as quirky as ever. Looking at his performances in both of the Fright Night movies, it is surprising that there wasn't a regular in the 80s teen comedy films. Roddy McDowell is back doing his Vincent Price take in the part of Peter Vincent. He's fun, but his character doesn't seem as important in this one as in the first one, and the dynamic between him and Ragsdale's character doesn't work quite as well this time around. Since Chris Sarandon's character Jerry from the first film did not return, the filmmakers had to give us some new villains to enjoy. The gorgeous Julie Carman, who would pop up in John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness a few years later, plays Regina, who is actually, and this is not really a big spoiler or anything, the sister of Vampire Jerry from the first Fright Night. She is sexy, seductive, and I'll definitely let her suck my neck any day of the week. She also has a gang of other creatures with her. Brian Thompson, who became iconic with his role as an alien bounty hunter in The X-Files, plays a sort of ghoulish, bug-eating henchman. He is, as always, awesome. John Greers plays a comedy relief werewolf of sorts, and there is some sort of roller skating prince-looking vampire, played by the choreographer Russell Clark in it as well. This gang of bad guys make the movie a lot of fun, as they're all different and bring something each to the table. They had great chemistry together, and the filmmakers made sure that they gave them plenty of scenes in the film. Hell, they even go bowling together at one point. The effects are also very cool. All the creatures look great, the gore is fun, and it is just another great example of how much better practical effects were 30 years ago compared to the CGI crap we are sadly witnessing today. I'm gonna give the biggest reason for this movie working to the fact that the producers were smart enough to hire a master of horror movie sequels. The director I'm talking about is of course none other than Tommy Lee Wallace. His name should be familiar to horror fans, but I don't think enough people have really taken a big look at his career and given him enough props for it. Just look at this. He wrote a screenplay to the insane MTV2, he directed the now fan favorite Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, the underrated sequel to John Carpenter's Vampires with Vampires Los Muertos, and this one, Fright Night 2. And just put the chair on top, he also did the excellent Stephen King miniseries, It. Why this guy didn't get to do more original stuff is just beyond me, as pretty much every property he got the chance to put his spin on ended up being very solid in my eyes. And to bring it back to Fright Night 2, I believe he schooled it on this one. My only complaint is I feel that the film has a bit too long running time. The 104 minutes it lasts is just a bit too much, and I think it would have benefited from being trimmed down 5 or 10 more minutes. There is a part around the hour mark where it feels like it slows down a bit, and I could have cut out some scenes from this part of the film to make it flow a bit better. So, Fright Night 2 is a very cool film, and there is some stale news regarding this movie. As mentioned in the opening of this review, this film pretty much flopped upon release. Instead of distributing the movie themselves, Columbia Pictures gave the movie over to their sister studio, TriStar Pictures. 
They gave the movie only a limited release, which basically gave the film no chance at all to do as much business as the first Fright Night. Things never seemed to get any better for the film though, as it would be first released on DVD by Artisan Entertainment in 2003 in only fucking full screen. Now, Tommy Lee Wallace is from the same school as John Carpenter, which means that it takes full use of the entire frame. In full screen, there is just too much stuff being cut out of the frame for it to work. The DVD still sold out pretty quickly, and that was that. 13 years later, even with a remake and a sequel to the remake, there has still been none real release on DVD or still no Blu-ray release. Thankfully, the movie has shown in all its widescreen glory on the no longer existing Monsters HD channel years ago. And of course, some all realized this would be a great occasion to record it and spread it onto the internet. Considering that the used Artisan DVD goes for above $50 on eBay, I would say go get the widescreen version somehow instead. From what I understand, the lack of a new release is due to the rights being in limbo. Hopefully one day this will finally get the attention that it deserves with a glorious official nice release. Hopefully by Scream Factory while we're at it with dreams. So yeah, Fright Night 2 is good times, it's surprisingly good and that's coming from someone who does not have any nostalgic childhood memories of it at all. This is actually the first time I've seen Fright Night 2, even if I always enjoyed the first one. I'm sure this would get a lot more recognition if more people were able to see it however, and the fact that it's so unavailable as it is sucks. So if you can't find Fright Night 2, make sure you grab it and give it a chance. It is a very fun film that deserves more than what it has gotten so far. So Fright Night 2 gets a solid 4 out of 5. So who else out there has been lucky enough to actually see this in widescreen and what do you think of the film? How does it hold up next to the original for you? And could the third movie at the time have worked? Let me know in the comment section below, a like would be appreciated and make sure you subscribe for more horror movie reviews coming to this channel in the near future. Thank you for watching and listening.